Hey everyone, this is Christopher here with Profex Max, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to change any place on the earth, any landscape on the earth into 3D terrain, um, whether it's mountains or whether it's cities or what, whatever it may be. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this in Blender. And the reason we can do this is because there's a free open source Blender add-on called Blender GIS, and we are going to be using that today, so I'll drop a link in the description for that add-on. You can download that and go and start using it in your Blender, but this is probably one of the coolest add-ons that has ever come to Blender. Um, and it's, it's, it's just really crazy that they put it out for completely free um, because it's definitely worth a lot of money. So anyways, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. So by clicking the link in the description for the Blender GitHub uh, or the Blender GIS GitHub link, once, we, once you click on it, you'll go to here and you'll click clone or download and download zip. And once you download that, you can go ahead and jump into Blender. And uh, so you want to go ahead and hit, uh, go into your preferences. Uh, and go over here, make sure it's on add-ons, then click install. You can go to wherever your uh, your uh, thing saved it and search for the zip file and then click install add-on. And I already have it installed, so I'm just going to exit out. And then I will search for it. Um, and under Blender GIS, you drop this open and you'll have a whole heap of stuff here. Pretty much all you need to do is go and set a cache folder. Um, I made a folder specifically for the cache, um, but just go ahead and click that and set a cache folder and then you'll be good to go. Just check it and then go into Blender. So, and then from now you will see this GIS thing up in the top. Go and click that, go to Web Geodata and go to Base Map. Um, you will have a few options here, whether it's from Google or OpenStreetMap, Bing or OpenStreetMap, WMS, I guess. Um, you'll want, there's a satellite and a map layer. You'll want to select your satellite layer. Um, and uh, we'll just keep it on Google. And you can go and hit OK. And once you do that, it'll go and get the database. And then from here, this simple map shows up. Now, you could zoom in and take forever zooming into wherever you want it. Or you could just go in from here, hit G and uh, search for wherever you want. So I am going to be searching for, uh, let's see, Mount Everest. I hope that's how you spell it. Anyways, um, and the zoom level, you want it, this will basically control how much you're zoomed into the mountain when you first get there. So uh, so here, I just want to set this to about 15. Um, I may zoom in a little bit later, uh, more later on, but that's okay. Next, just click OK. And it will download. Um, it's downloading. Uh, it's basically zooming into where it is. And here we go. Here we are at Mount Everest. As you can see, we are a little bit too zoomed in here. Uh, so let's zoom back out a little bit. Uh, let's wait for it to build it again. And boom. Okay, this is fairly good, I should say. So once you're, once you're, um, you can scroll around just using your middle mouse wheel. And once you're finished, just go ahead and hit E. And we'll pop that. And now I'll we'll project this onto a plane. Next, you'll want to go over to GIS and go Web Geodata and get and click Get SRTM. And from here, um, Blender may take a little bit to uh, get the uh, SRTM, uh, the 3D data, but um, it actually got it pretty easy for me for Mount Everest. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump back into Blender. So here we have the 3D Mount Everest in our scene. Um, I hope this is Mount Everest. I think it is. It sort of looks like the pictures you see, but anyways, if it isn't, then okay. Well, anyways, uh, so here we have it, and uh, so from here I'm going to jump from EV to Cycles. Um, under Film, let's go and check Transparent, and then let's just go and add in an HDR. And then let's go ahead and view the rendered. And here you go, here you have it. Um, uh, whoops, let's go to Color Management and change this to higher contrast right here. And you can play around with this and texture a little bit more um, than this. You can, you know, uh, something I like to do here is um, with this selected, let's hit Control Shift D, bring that down, Shift A, vector bump, and then drag your drag your color into your height, and uh, let's go and zoom in here so we can see the effect. Your normal into your normal, and boom, there you go. You get a little bit more of the 3D on the little uh, smaller scale. Um, with now plugging the same image into your normal socket. And uh, so you may notice that uh, this is sort of um, smooth. So all you need to do is tab in edit mode, hit A so you can select it all, and subdivide this. I'm going to subdivide it 20 times. Pretty good number. That's fine. You can subdivide a little bit more, but that's all I'm going to do for now. 
And then when you go back into object mode, you'll see everything staggered and it looks really stupid. So what you want to do is you want to go into your modifiers and under your uh, dim, I don't know what that is, just this modifier. I'm guessing it's your blender disk modifier that put it on. I'm not sure. Anyways, <laughs> um, you want to click here to go to a new texture and then under sampling, check interpolation. And that will smooth everything out. Um, boom. Okay. Which now it's a lot smoother and like that. And so, like I said, you could mess with uh, this. Uh, this mesh more and texture a little bit more, you know, maybe add some ambient occlusion. I know I've seen some people add a little bit more ambient occlusion, uh, things of that nature. But this is the basic way you use the Blender Gist add-on. Now I said at the beginning of the tutorial that you could use this for a city. So let's get just go and load up a new scene. Doesn't really matter. Um, and by the way, if you're going to be uh, long-term keeping, say, the mountain, you want to apply your um, your modifiers, just top first, remember. Uh, apply your modifiers because, uh, I guess, uh, one time I got one, and it completely messed up the uh, the blender gets added on, completely messed up, and now it's all jagged and ruined. So if you're wanting to keep it and work on it over a long period of time, you want to apply your modifiers. So anyways, uh, next thing we want to do, um, let's just go ahead and blender guess, base map, uh, hit OK. And then from here, let's hit G. Uh, let's check Toronto. Um, see if that works. Uh, let's go ahead and hit um, 15 and check OK. And hopefully this will bring it to Toronto, Canada, which is what I'm hoping. Let's see. There we go. OK, boom. Uh, let's zoom in here. Um, fairly good. Um, I don't know if I should zoom in a little bit more. No, this should be good. I'll let it build it and hit, then hit E, and here you have it. Now, next, you are going to go down here and check Git OSM, which OSM, I believe, stands for Open Street Map, and that has been an add-on that you've been able to do this um, on the web and things of that nature and uh, take a whole city into Blender before, but now it's just with Blender GIS, and so you can just go and get it straight from Blender GIS. So, check Open Street Map, and then this uh, new Git OSM thing will pop up. Basically, um, I've had trouble with it never loading if I check everything. I mean, it will with smaller portions, but with a larger portion like this, it may not. So I'm just going to check buildings, hold on shift, and check highways. I also want to check elevation from object and separate objects. From here, I want to just go ahead and click OK. And uh, getting the open street map, depending on uh, the speed of your computer and the, lar the size of your area, can take a little bit of time to uh, get the building data. You know, the 3D building data for your thing. So... <laughs> thousand years later so here I am back and uh, here is our building um, I do have to say though this is a little bit different because um, it was just taking too long and I don't want to record for 10 hours um, while I did it this is probably the hardest thing that um, blender gifts has is extracting these buildings here so what I did was I zoomed in a little bit more and I only selected buildings okay so I didn't select highways this time but as you can see um, it goes ahead and it extracts all the 3d buildings for you and so you can just start texturing without having to model all these 3d buildings I mean how insane is that? That is amazing, okay? Um, yeah, and it still has the um, little, uh, 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 the, oh, that's actually building right there. Oh, wow. <sighs> it messed up. Well, anyways, um, as you can still see, I'm going to try to hide these and so I can, well, that's so weird. Anyway, um, uh, so it still has the image on the plane down there. So if you uh, jump into shader editor, once again, uh, control shift D. And we can go and add in a vector bump, color to height, normal to normal. And uh, well, we're not currently seeing anything because we're not rendering it and I didn't change it to cycles. Um, um, as you can see in a second here, once I load everything I should have done earlier. So now, as you can see, um, things are a little bit more 3D. Uh, now, drop it off. And things, I believe, look at just a little bit more flask. And so you can still use this plane if you're a city flyover or something like that. You can still use this. Um, of course, there will be roads in between um, it, I believe, at least. Yeah, see? See, there's streets and things of that nature. So, oops, so you can take little 3D cars and make them drive along the streets there. Um, so yeah, this would definitely work for a city flyover, even just with, you know, just the image on the plane right there. 
So, yeah, that is it for me today. So, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope it's helpful to you guys. If you guys do like this video, click that like button down below. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments box down below. And for more videos on Blender and DaVinci Resolve and post-production CGI and all that kind of stuff, click that subscribe button.